Marvelous Garden of Edward James. Got a 3 p.m. appointment. I can't tell how many people they're letting in at a time, but they're making a scheduled appointment, so. We'll start right here before I get in line. It's just a few more minutes till, till my time anyway. There you can kind of see the creek and part of his sculptures that we're not allowed to enter for some reason. And this is the entryway. Hey. That might not go this way first. I don't know why. Oh, I guess it looks like they're counting the numbers of how many people are in each section. So that's why I have to go this way first. There's a whole area up here that they have blocked off. I don't know why, you can hear the river running. Surely we'll get to see it soon. Okay, so I found out what's going on. Uh, yes, this area is blocked off, but they're also keeping us in groups. So I have to stay in this area for five minutes, waiting for the rest of the people in this time zone, or time slot rather, and then we get to work our way through as a group. So I brought my drone in. Um, looks like I'm just carrying it around for no reason because I'm not gonna be able to sneak it out in a group. Uh, maybe another time. This is the 10% of the property that we're gonna see. We are about right here right now. Okay. We're gonna start this way. The road's supposed to be around this way. You see that? But there's a tree for over here. So we're gonna take this other. We're supposed to go that way. We're gonna come back down. We're gonna see this big, beautiful, big waterfall. Come back out this way to Edward James' studio. Things are different here. Everything's different because of COVID. But what's going on this time, you're not allowed to come in without a guide. You're kept to small groups. Since I wanted to speak English, I have a guide to myself, so we'll see what we get. Oh, he never named anything no, himself? He, he didn't have like a, uh, the purpose of naming them, you know, it was just uh, something that was had to be built just for, uh, for aesthetic, for decoration. The workers called that one Stairway to Heaven. Huh? Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. And so he had, he had birds up there, he had a bedroom, and he even had a bow constrictor. Yeah. Alligators. Alligators. Flamingos. And so Edward Jones was born in a 300 bedroom castle and he inherited diamond mines, mines copper mines, copper mines, uh, railroad North America, railroad North uh, America. So he was more than an like art collector. Yeah. He patroned Salvador Dali career. Okay. Bought him almost 200 paintings in Dali. Yeah. Uh, plus this place was never built with idea of bringing people. Yeah, it was his place. It was yeah, his it garden. Was his place. Yeah, his garden. Yeah. A hidden place in Mexico for everything. This is a coffee plant. When he first came here... Oh, here's coffee. Yeah. This is a coffee bean. They're ready in November. They turn red, ready to harvest. Okay, so it won't be long. So okay. Edward began the project of his garden in 1949. 13 years later, 1962, all these beautiful orchids, this one was introduced from India, this orchid, they all died, 15,000 orchids died two nights because we had three inches of snow, which is not very common in this humid. Yeah, I didn't know it ever snowed here. Yeah, that snowed that time and it killed every single plant, so he decided to start building concrete plants. This ring was called by the workers the queen's ring because it has a shape as a giant ring. Edward said, that's not a ring. That was inspired on the mathematical writer Lewis Carroll. He wrote Alice in Wonderland. You can see the handle on the outside. Oh yeah, it is a teapot. Yeah, a teapot with two doors. Uh -huh. There's a certain feeling inside the garden as uh, Alice in Wonderland. Pedro Friedenberg. Pedro Friedenberg. He's the one designing this, this chair and shape his hand. You can sit here and lean back on the chair. It's a, it's a hand shape. It's a hand a chair. Uh -huh. He spent some time in this garden, San Luis Potosí, in Mexico, with Edward James. This is a birdhouse. Edward James used to have about 150 macaws and chickens and parrots that would fly out in and out free. The colors were not a primary idea of Edward. 
He said he was going to let the raw concrete so the moss, lichens, and fern will attach to it better and will give an appearance, appearance as an old building, like an abandoned ancient building. That's why he left the nature grow over the top, giving it this organic feeling to this, like an old ruins. <laughs> Introducing the garden from Costa Rica. It's a beautiful plant. So he brought a lot of plants from oh. around the world. Yeah, from around the world he brought plants. This is an orchid. This one has like fangs inside, like two vampire fangs. Yeah. Uh, this is from the family of ginger. So there's a bunch of plants in the garden that Jay was bringing through year to year. That's why when 1962 the snow killed everything, he was disappointed. So in 1962 when the snow came and killed all the orchids, he said the indigenous people told Edward James that ash had fallen over everything because they didn't know what snow was. They'd never seen it before. If they wanted to form this tunnel, they use four boards. Mm -hmm. Three meters long, they can reduce the boards. But they want to make the molds of this complicated stuff. It could take three months to build them. They would only use one time. Edward was a really good boss man. He paid triple salary to 150 workers daily, a house for free, two storage. Medical insurance was fully covered for every worker. Plus, he donated scholarships to his sons of the workers. People love him in town. Those are cornucopias. Yeah, the cornucopia planters. Yeah, That's they're, nice. They're hollow, and they used to use them as a flower pot for orchids or bird nest. Yeah, that's really nice. Beautiful. This is really interesting here where you see the concrete go through the concrete. That's a little bridge for a squirrel so they can go over there. Oh, it's a squirrel bridge. All the carpentry was done by hand, no electricity. That's Edward James with his macaws. He's on a waterfall with his Mexican poncho. Oh yeah, nice. I like that. <laughs> That's why they said he obligated workers to, to, to work naked. But no, he was out there swimming. And this indigenous people were used to swimming without clothes. Right. The only pictures they said in the magazine that he obligated them to work. Well, no. so that's just what they did. Yeah. Let me get a look here. Yeah. Let's get a look at the beginning of this waterfall here. He was just telling me that when Edward James brought a diesel generator here and he powered about 40 lights and a bunch of people came running from town to help him put out the fire because it was the first electricity around and they thought the place was on fire. So then he put buckets of water under each of the lights to make it look like a centipede going up the hill as it reflected the light. Now look at this waterfall. That's been sculpted all the way up. And we'll see a lot more of it, I hope. I hope so. Everywhere you look, things have been altered. There are planters. You sometimes, I mean, it's made to blend in with the natural environment. His idea was to create the Garden of Eden here on Earth. There are columns all the way up the hill. Concrete columns sticking out of the jungle canopy. This property encompasses about a hundred acres in total. And you can't see it all on one trip. He was just telling me that. He said it would take two full days to see it all. And I can tell you, I've been here three or four times and I haven't seen it all yet. It's an amazing property. And we won't see it all today because we're limited to an hour and a half. Okay, he brought white-tailed deer back in here. And everywhere we walk, there are steps, there's concrete, there's planters. It's, uh, all this was done by hand. Uh, 150 or so workers working every day. Okay. That is the Bamboo Palace. Oh, that was the last building he built in the 80s. The idea? He had to build these concrete bamboos. He was going to have showers and restrooms here, a little bedroom on top, and a studio on top. But he died in Italy after the trip he made to India. Up here in the mountain, James built his own sarcophagus with the shape of his body. 
imprinted in concrete and he wanted to be buried there but his sisters didn't want to bring him back from England so the sarcophagus was empty and this one was built in 81 and um, he died in 84 this building is the airplane oh it just keeps going and going and going Oh. That's a swimming pool resembled, resembling a big blue eye. He sat in the center of it. And this is his bamboo structure. Many of his buildings went to nowhere. In some places he has steps that just go into the ceiling. And he said this was just what he dreamed. And he would finish it when he dreamed of it being finished. That house was being built for his good friend Guinness, the beer ironing company Guinness. Oh, oh really? So that house was being built for the owner of Guinness. He must have had some good beer here, huh? He didn't want to bring Salvador Dali, a crazy guy. He did run the big company owner. Yes. Very dangerous walking at night. But he did like this, so the water after the rain could drain out from underneath. But it's still very low. Yeah. So sure. be careful. This concrete bench, right in the middle of the day when it was very hot, he used to sit there and enjoy a little of the Scottish whiskey with his Cuban cigar. Inside it is very fresh. Looks like a good place for a whiskey and a cigar to me. Above the waterfall, and this again is the building that was built for the owner of Guinness Beer. And he was just telling us that these uh, these flowers represent the plants that died in the snow, and that's why he wanted them painted white to represent the snow covering them. See or something? It just made like a Ben Gay. Smell that? It smells just like Ben Gay. That's yeah. what he said. This is an old plant. An, an alcohol? That Rubbing alcohol? Wow, that's impressive. It smells like Ben Gay for sure. The waterfall runs from the top of the property all the way out the bottom, and it's all manicured. He was just saying that they test the quality of the water routinely to make sure it's pure, and it is. It's pure enough to drink. We're about to see it. All manicured. All landscaped, all beautiful, pure water. massage tub there. If they clean the water clean the hole out the water will come through and give you a water massage. 
This is ginger. The ginger, ginger flower it smells amazing. Really strong. You can smell it a long ways away. We're only covering. I think he said a tenth of the property today. Ten percent. Yeah, ten percent of the property is all we're seeing today. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yeah. Well, a lot of people uh, have uh, afraid of coming to Mexico because this psychosis of narcos fight everywhere. It's not that bad. The news make it look bad. I have a lot of people who come and visit Mexico. As long as you're not in the middle of the night fighting over a beer in a bar like any other part of the world, you won't get in problem. Mexico is a free place to travel. It's very calm. You get good food, good hotels, and there's no problem. You can travel easily everywhere. And there you have it from the source. And I agree. I've traveled to Mexico for many years. And I think you're going to see a lot more about Mexico in the near future because Mexico is allowing people to travel. The Flor de Lis? The Flor de Lis Bridge. Yeah. So it was very fragile, so they decided to close that pathway in real Britain. And you can see why. There are the Flor de Lises. Yeah, it is fragile, so it's closed. That's okay, it gets a better view walking beside it anyway. Wild cats look like jaguars. Oh, it's an ocelot cage. Yeah. It's for uh, wild ocelots that they look like jaguars. So he had all kinds of animals here too, huh? Yeah, so he had flamingos come, and ducks uh -huh. here. And then he, uh, he ended up with two alligators that grew really big. This is the water tanks for his alligators. Looks like they had a pretty cool standard of living, doesn't it? This is the back side of his studio. And, uh, our guide today, his mother worked for Edward James and his father did too. And so he knew the guy growing up. He uh, knew him as a young child before he passed away. And he was telling me Edward James's animals live better than they did. Okay, look at this. That's an interesting staircase there, or ladder. Let's go see what we got here. Giant fern, okay. It's getting late, they're starting to light everything up. There's a little nowhere. Yeah, more stairs to nowhere. Nice iron spiral staircase there. Oh, was it? Yeah, he used to went way up the top of the grade upstairs. Stayed there for half an hour looking everywhere. It's like a type of meditation. Yeah. For logic and architecture, from point A to point B, you have stairs to take you from one point to another. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, plan in architecture. Out here breaks with the rules completely in architecture. That one stair that takes you nowhere, like those up there. So those stairs were twice as tall, but they got knocked out by a tree. He said Edward James would go up there and stand on the very top and meditate. So he found this place in the 40s. Can you imagine what it took to find this place now? They didn't have the highways we have now. It's probably dirt roads to get here. No telling how long it took to get here from California. Now we are back where we started. So that's our tour for today. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. So that's the end of our tour of Las Posas. I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you come to Hitla, I would highly recommend it. And when all this COVID mess is over, it'll be a lot better. I'm not complaining. That was a good tour. But normally, you can swim in the pools there and you can roam about freely. Just not right now. So thanks for watching. I hope your day is filled with joy, good food, and a little bit of adventure. Take care.